Tears of the Kingdom's on the horizon, and I could not be more excited. Man, when that first trailer dropped, I reached my game trailer based serotonin peak. We waited 7 years since Breath of the Wild for the next 3D Zelda, and the game has only been in development for 5 of those years. A lot of people have been really critical of all the trailers after the first one, but I believe that Nintendo has been purposefully very stingy with footage and information and everything. I really think that we have only seen a small fraction of the game. I have high hopes and high expectations for this game, but I also have some concerns. I'm not totally without fear that this game might not be what it should be after 5 years of development. I thought I'd go through some of my hopes and fears for this game here. Enemy Variety Breath of the Wild had a truly pathetic amount of enemies. Their roster boiled down to the little piggy family, the scary horse people, the lizards, the wizards, and the goo. Sure, there were a couple others, but that was the vast majority of what most people faced during their playthrough. I want more. I want new enemies like a magician Ika or a scary demon monster from another dimension. I want old enemies back too. I'm so glad b deads are returning, but I hunger for more. Give me back the Dongos. Give me back Stealthless Knights. Give me back Deku Babas. If Tears of the Kingdom does not bring back Dark Nuts, I'ma have a problem. Honestly, I would probably only be satisfied if the enemy roster has tripled in size since Breath of the Wild, and I just mean that for the regular enemies. Don't even get me started on the overworld bosses. I am so tired of seeing this stupid sleeping pig. I need more variety. Dungeons. This might be the most common thing people want, and while I do have a tiny smidge of doubt hanging around the back of my mind, I truly believe we are getting dungeons back. I think a tutorial equivalent to the Great Plateau is going to be on a skyline and contain a first dungeon that will have the same aesthetic as the Skylands, and after that, all the other dungeons will be unique and cool. I think getting a main 7-8 dungeon kind of thing is inevitable, so I'm not scared that we won't be getting those. I'm scared that's all we're getting. Since we're going to be playing in the same world, the existence of optional, hidden, overworld dungeons that I can discover is super important to me, and it's that that I fear will not be in the game. Breath of the Wild's bosses were just… awful. Their designs are the same, their music is the same, they're just so boring. Where's the personality, the memorableness, the catchy music? Even Ganon was like this. Maybe this spider goo monster would have been cool if the blights weren't in the game, but they were. And you probably don't even need me to get into Dark Beast Ganon. The only real boss of the game with a unique design, unique music, and memorable character is Master Koga. Also Maskoshia, but that doesn't count. I hope Tears of the Kingdom will deliver in this area where Breath of the Wild did not. Give me a Phantom Gandorf type boss, a big scary spider boss, a fierce suit of armor inhabited by a giant Poe, really anything. Old bosses reimagined, or new ones entirely, I do not care. Just gimme. The towns of Breath of the Wild disappointed me, to be honest. They're just very small and I didn't feel like there was much around them I wanted to do. The only one I really liked was Hateno, because even though it wasn't that big, it did a lot of unique stuff. The cursed statue, the outfit dyer, or Link's house, etc. I want each town to feel more like that. I hope they've had some expanding and remodeling during the time skip, especially Zora's Domain and Terrytown. They felt tiny. And some new, smaller settlements in places one wouldn't expect would be the cherry on top. Key items versus champion abilities. The champion abilities were pretty problematic for me. In my playthrough, they simply made things less fun. Durek's Protection, Mipha's Grace, and Erosa's Fury all made combat less fun for me in different ways, but Revali's Gale just sucked all the enjoyment out of climbing challenges for me. I really prefer getting helpful items from each dungeon, not items that allow me to traverse the world in ways I couldn't before, as that goes against the game's idea of total freedom from the word go, but rather items that were just helpful. Not game-breaking, but helpful. Maybe even additional abilities for the hand. Story. Having a traditionally told Zelda story is a no-brainer, and I'd be shocked if they didn't deliver on that. I want that and more. I want to see a shakeup of the Zelda formula. I want lore. I want explanations for our questions about the merged timelines, the goddess dragons, the Triforce, the Zonai, Astor, all of that. Besides those, I want bigger story revelations. I want to see Demise and Fee come out of the Master Sword. I want Zelda to develop, and I want to hear Ganon's motivations and why his goals change from conquest to obliteration. This is a long shot, but if we could see our heroes band together at the end with Gandorf to end the cycle of reincarnation, I would be really happy. New weapon types. This might come off as a little greedy. Well, this whole thing might have come off as a little greedy, but I digress. This is my wish list, so I will wish to my heart's content. I want more weapon types. Right now, we have small swords, big swords, and spears. Within those groups, there are other mini types like boomerangs, magic rods, and hammers. I want fully realized weapon classes. I want throwable knives and boomerangs as their own thing, and magical rods that control more creatively than straight shooting balls of fire as their own thing. 
and it went entirely new weapon types like whips and chain weapons. Before we get to my last hope slash fear, here are a few honorable mentions. The Pokori. I want to see the Minish return. They were planned for Breath of the Wild, but they got cut due to time. So you guys had five years. Let us have these adorable little creatures of their own city. Rehydrated Gandorf. Everyone wants Rehydrated Ganondorf. But when we hear this voice, Rise. which is almost certainly Ganondorf, Matt Mercer's vocal cords don't sound very corpse-like. That gives me hope, because I want to get to see Gandorf as both a scary demon lich, and also an intimidating, towering warrior. Combat changes. I want combat to be tuned and given more depth. I want more possible combos and attacks and strategy. I want the flurry rush and the parry to be harder to do. And most of all, I want cooking to be fixed. Making meals that healed an absurd amount was absurdly easy. And more than that, being able to pause time and heal is game-breaking. An ever-changing world. I want the world to change dynamically. I don't want it to get stale. I want events that change how the world looks and plays like. Once I beat a dungeon or do something significant in the story or fight a new area, I want the world to change in some way so even though I'm exploring a world I've already seen every inch of, I'm still seeing new things everywhere I go and everywhere I revisit. FPS and resolution. I'm seriously worried my old non-OLED Switch will not be able to run the game. Some people had serious FPS issues with the original, but without an OLED, I am positively terrified it's just gonna run like garbage. Now, onto my final fear slash hope. You probably already guessed it, but I want to play as Zelda. When the first rumors came out, I was staunchly against the idea. But as I contemplated the possibilities, I realized how cool it could be. My favorite Fire Emblem game is Echoes Shadows of Valentia, and in that game you can control two main characters with two parties and you can switch in between them. Doing stuff as one character opens up stuff for another. I want Zelda to be like that. I want her to be trapped deep underground but not captured by Gandalf or anything. I want the player to be able to control her and I would want her to play sort of uniquely compared to Link. I especially want her and Link to be able to communicate in some way. I think having them be able to interact through some kind of texting app from Zelda's new Chica Slate and then an ability from Link's arm could allow them to develop as written characters in interesting ways, especially Link. Zelda's design looks like a playable character too, especially with her short hair that wouldn't clip with objects on her back during gameplay, unlike her old style. I just think it would be cool. And that's everything. I am hyped for this game, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't a bit worried. I want to trust Nintendo, but fear is getting the better of me. At least we won't have to wait much longer. And to be clear, I didn't expect all these things, and I'm sure even without some of these things, Tears of the Kingdom will be a great game that I will not regret buying. These are just my personal ideas and desires. Are there things on my wishlist you want too? Are there things on there that you want to call out as not-sensical pipe dreams? Tell me in the comments, and make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Bye!